Welcome to episode one of our first ever river cruise on the Tui Isla. Right, right then. then. Our river cruise adventure has started. So um, we're actually on the river cruise ship now, we aren't are. we? The adventure has started, the cruise has started because we don't leave until tomorrow. tomorrow. But let's start right at the very beginning. We uh, flew from Manchester. We stayed at the Clayton Hotel um, where we've parked our car as well. It was a very short stay because we had to get up at 2 a.m. to get to the airport for 3 a.m. for a flight at 6 because it's been so chaotic hasn't it the airport yes, anyway took us an hour or so wouldn't it to get through but eventually got through a flight with easyjet was great wasn't it, it was packed yeah. packed full of um hen parties and stag parties coming to budapest for the weekend so a bit roady but uh we managed to nap a little bit didn't we yeah so i'm gonna leave it there i'm gonna censor myself <laughs> on what i'd like to say about some of the people on that flight but yes still. it was a little frustrated but anyway so um arrived in budapest uh we left uh, obviously in the dark, but the weather at home has been good, hasn't it? Yes. We've arrived in Budapest and it's pouring with rain. So, but there we are. It's we're used to that. Say la vie. Say la vie. Yes. They say somewhere. They do. So, uh, as soon as we got off the plane in Budapest, we phoned a Tui rep. It's been very simple, hasn't it, Paul? Very simple. Yes. Uh, we fed a Tui rep, we had an envelope with our names on, put our tags on our cases, we were taken to a coach, it took about half an hour, and we arrived at the the river port. I guess that's what you call it. It's not really called the river port, is it? It's just the river. There's 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 no um there's no building to go into, there's nothing. And then we had the added bonus of our ship is actually not docked against the riverbank. Our ship is actually docked against a ship that's docked against the riverbank. Yes. So the first river ship we got on wasn't ours. <laughs> and we had to get on that ship and we had to walk up to the top, across the top deck, down the other side and onto our ship. Yeah, we've arrived at the ship. We're just about to go on and it's very wet as you can see. Yes. <laughs> it's like British weather. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. So we've got to go through another ship by the looks because our ship's the other side. I say. Hi there. Welcome. Thank you. So you can just get all your uh, COVID documents there. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You may proceed. Thank you. Hello. Hello there. Welcome. Welcome. Major Euro number 9. 209, yeah. 209. 209. Okay. Uh, did they check your. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have a seat in the lounge, please. Thank you. Oh, we went up and over and got on the ship, and that's when we had to show, first show our documents yeah. that um, Tui Vassal, which is our vaccination status, and our COVID test that we did with Chronomics before we left. Yeah, two days ago. Now, I. Obviously, it's not like me to be sarcastic or to be accused of stating the obvious, but surely the time to check that paperwork is when we're still in England before we fly to another country. So if we'd have basically on the boat, ship, whatever we're going at, it's a and then cruise ship, it's a really it's cruise ship. Say boat. and then they ask us, oh, have you got your paperwork, Mush? Well, no, as it turns out, we haven't. <laughs> oh, so what do we do now then? So surely... Um, Tui, you should be doing that, and any other cruise lines out there who run this weird system, 
if you're going to make people jump through these hoops, surely you should be checking before they leave. It's like if it was, if there wasn't a flight involved, I know I'm going on a tangent now, it's like if there wasn't a flight involved, say you were just getting on a cruise ship in Southampton, it's like three days into the cruise, them saying to you, oh, can I see your paperwork? Well, not that three ain't, days. No, but it's, it's three days ago we took our test. Nobody asked to see it till we got here. It's like, I just, uh, I don't get anyway, it. Anyway, uh, let's stop the ranting. Yes. I, I get sorry, your frustrations sorry. and I, uh, yes, what you're saying is right. Our paperwork should have been checked before we checked into our flight. But we didn't fly with two, you flew with EasyJet. Yeah. So there's another spanner in the works. Anyway, we, we digress. Let's get back to today yes. and the, the nice things. The nice things. So we, as soon as we got on the ship, showed our paperwork, they said, no problem, go and sit in the observatory um, lounge, which was a bar. Paul's eyes then lit up. <laughs> and we sat there and uh, we're all inclusive. We paid, um, for clarity, we paid um, just over £1,100, wasn't it, each for this cruise? Yes. And we paid, within that, we paid £266 for an all-inclusive package. We did. And um, so we went, Paul went straight up to the bar. They said, what's your cabin number? Because we knew our cabin number because of our tag on our luggage. Um, and we got our drinks. It was that easy, wasn't it? It was that easy. And just walking on a river cruise ship is just simple, isn't it? Yeah. Compared and walking to... on two river cruise, ship, cruise ships is even better. Yeah. I haven't been drinking, honestly. Um... Yes. So, observatory lounge, first impression was like, oh my god, this is a beautiful lounge. Views over Budapest through the rain. Um, and we thought, what a great start. It was then time for lunch. So they said, come on through, have a bite to eat. And it was very simple. Um, as in, there wasn't a complex menu. We didn't get in a written menu. It was like basically like to start this potato soup, yeah, which was oh it was my delicious. god, it was delicious. I have to say, it was delicious. Yeah, and then for mains, um, we had pasta. You could choose either vegetable pasta or bolognese. Yeah. So we had one each and shared that, which was lovely, wasn't it? it was very good. And then for pudding, it was just some fruit. And the waiter did explain. Said, look, this is just a simple lunch for welcome everyone on board um, and making sure everyone's fed and watered. Yeah. And it did the trick, didn't it? But yeah, but the, but the food, yeah. even though it was a light lunch, the food was delicious. Yes, it was. It and the service was excellent. And nice venue, wasn't it? Yeah. But Vidastro, I think it was called. Vidastro. There's two restaurants, the Vidastro and the Bistro. Yes, we haven't got to the Bistro yet. No. Right, so with our bellies full and feeling very, very um, content, we uh, wanted to get into our cabin, but we couldn't do that because it wasn't quite ready. So we went back to the observatory lounge and had another beer, and then we were told that we could go to our cabins. Yes. Um, so we thought, right, let's find 209. Now, we booked a French balcony suite. I had to think then... Um, which is one of the highest qualities yeah. of cabin on the ship. We picked deck two because we wanted to be near the water, but we could have picked deck three and paid a little bit more. Um, but we've chose deck two. Yeah, but we pref yeah but we prefer being close to the water, don't we? Because it brings back memories when we used to do canal boat holidays when we were young. We did have some fantastic yeah. now um, with our friends Tim and Jill yeah. and wasn't it? Um, but anyway, so we. Um, we're then told we come to our cabin, and this is what we found. Right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, a new cabin. Oh, that's a big one. Lights. <laughs> oh, look at this. No. It is dark in here. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, look, we've got... <laughs> There's more cabin over there. <laughs> this is awesome, actually, size-wise. Look, we've got two -y slippers and dressing gowns and bottles. We've got a nice little letter here. Yep, that's about the sound of music, which we know about. So we're going to just go... Because um... I had, um, I have had a... A couple of pints at the bar. Yes, we found the observatory. I thought that was a walk-in wardrobe, but it's actually a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, let's have a look around this side quickly. Oh. This is big, isn't it? But we did book a suite. Where's the other lights? Is this it? Sure there must be more lights somewhere. Yes. yes. And bathroom. There's two bathrooms. There oh my god, that's huge. How do we lights? 
Oh my god, that is awesome. Morton Brown, uh, <gasps> well, we will be doing a, a full. Oh, this is fab, isn't it, Pauline? It? it is. Now, as we said um, earlier, when we got to get on the ship, we had to get up and over another river ship. So, the downside to that, if Paul opens the windows, well, opens the, the curtains. Let's have a look at the view of Budapest. Where's <laughs> that? That's a young pen. Oh, there she is. There ah. she is, there's Budapest. Oh, at least we haven't got another window, Paulie. Oh, sorry, love. <laughs> No, we haven't got another window, we'll have to get we this have. one shut. So this is looking into the ship called, oh, we don't know what it's called, do we? The TM Vega from Basel. Switzerland. Switzerland. Look, we're looking mm. right into the reception. Well, gaff, yeah. So we have to be careful there, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I keep that one? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So as you can see, the cabin is fantastic. Is We've just amazing. unpacked. Um, storage is amazing the bathroom is just like oh my god one of the best bathrooms we've seen at sea apart from saga saga you, win i've heard people but, say oh yeah that ship's okay but it wouldn't be any good for a world cruise because there's not enough storage i think oh you my could god. do three world cruises yeah. in this cabin there's so much and the show is humongous oh, isn't yeah, it? it is yeah you could have um, like a... all enclosed in all very private uh, you can see behind us what you've seen because we've given you a little whistle stop tour of the of the cabin but we will, we will be doing once we've been living in here for um, the seven nights we'll give you a proper tour, proper tour. Um, but it's absolutely fantastic loads of sockets it's um, we've got a fridge um, we're right by reception which Paul has been out and they're like oh my god he's back again already yeah. <laughs> just because we can they work. now know me as Mr 209 <laughs> <laughs> anyway Lovely, love the cabin. Like I say, the view's not where it should be at the moment, but I'm sure. No, that's gonna... Luckily, we're on a boat. No. And when we go a back... ship. And when we finish, and the it'll video, move. We're going to go back out to the observatory lounge, where I might try a, a diet beverage or a water or something. Um, we're going to go and have a really good look around. Actually, we're going to go up on deck. We we? Know, well, one of us is, and the other's <laughs> going to sit and have a beer. So. Um, and that's why I like watching our blogs and vlogs because I like to see what Carol's <laughs> been up to. So um, we're we're quite weary, aren't we, from getting up at two o'clock this morning? So we're going to just chill out on the ship. There's a welcome sort of meeting at yeah. six p.m. We got dinner at seven. We're just going to chill out and um, observe the lovely view of Budapest. But tomorrow we've got a full day. We're up. We've set the alarm for eight o'clock. We're up for breakfast, and Paul is going to get up and we're going to explore Budapest. Which compared to set the alarm for two o'clock this morning yeah we're not eight o'clock's just like luxury yeah, we're, we're a bit uh and on a side note the only thing wrong in the cabin was we couldn't get the safe to work and yes went to reception the engineer's been here he had to make two visits yeah but he's come back and he's just fixed it and it's all hunky-dory yes so we're all so, set to yeah, go we're all set to go we can put our gold bullion and diamonds <laughs> yes. and all that sort of it's stuff it's only a small there. safe it's just yeah. you can't get a laptop just, or an ipad in there so just a gold bullion just gold bullion yeah. in there and we've already told people our cabin number <gasps> and, that, and that the safe goes one two three four oh it will be no surprise to anybody that I did as I was told and we went for a walk up on the top of the ship. The ship is 135 metres long, so if the weather is suitable, there's more than enough space for lounging in the sun. Sadly that wasn't the case today, but hopefully the weather will improve across the week. So here's a little look around. After a quick wander around the top deck, we headed down one floor and found the club lounge. This lovely little lounge seats around 20 people and is the ideal spot for a pre-dinner cocktail. This was a really cosy lounge and even though the fire was purely decorative, there was something quite hypnotic about it.
Heading towards the front of the ship, you come to the atrium, which leads on to the main entertainment venue, the observatory. We wondered where all the passengers were, so we asked the bar manager, and he told us that they were either having a snooze, or some hadn't actually even got on the ship yet. As our exploring continued, we found a doorway that takes you right out to the front of the ship. There certainly appears to be plenty of outside space on this ship. With all the passengers now safely on board, it was time for a safety meeting and to be introduced to all the ship's crew. First gentleman in white, it's quite obvious what he's doing on board. Yeah? He's not our engineer, he's our excellent executive chef, Alvin from Philippines. And we have on board our excellent Metro de Florian from Romania. Next gentleman is in charge of your happiness. Because he always Bar manager. needs to make sure that your glasses are full and he serves cocktails for you. He's our excellent bar manager, Jonut from Romania. <laughs> Next gentleman is my assistant. He's our assistant hotel manager, Mr. Mija from Romania. One, two, three, four gentlemen and one lady. She's the hero for today. Because when you came on board, you found the ship tip top clean. It's our excellent chief housekeeper, Lina from Bulgaria. With the welcome meeting now completed, it was time to enjoy our first dinner of the cruise. We both chose the baby shrimp cocktail to start. I went for the pork tenderloin as my main, and Carol chose the grilled salmon steak. And it was all finished off nicely with a black forest cherry cake. It was a delicious first dinner, but now it's time to enjoy some cocktails. So, I just asked the barman to make Carol uh, raspberry, strawberry, uh, raspberry daiquiri, raspberry daiquiri, or as Carol calls it, a daiquiri for some reason. I've got all pass. He didn't have the requisite ingredients, but what he's knocked up, Carol said, was spectacular. It's like um, raspberry jelly in a cold alcoholic form. Woo! <laughs> What's not to like? <laughs> mm, cheers! Our first taste of entertainment on the cruise came courtesy of Phil, the resident and very talented guitarist. This was followed by a troupe of traditional Hungarian dancers. We have to admit, we'd never seen anything quite like this before, but as you can tell by the applause at the end, everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. With our early start now catching up with us, we enjoyed one for the road while looking out over the spectacular views of Budapest. Right then, morning, morning. So we have had the most fabulous night's sleep, haven't we? Oh my God, yes. We slept like logs and... Um... Oh, don't, don't. <laughs> I am not to say that. Up in the fireplace. Oh, I knew that. that. <laughs> we have had such a good night's sleep. This bed is so comfortable. The room is so comfortable. Isn't it? It's just the temperature's perfect. Everything's. I can't find anything wrong with this cabin so far. Can you? We didn't. We didn't have a spoon to make our coffee with this morning. Oh yes, we didn't have a spoon. 
So we have to go and get a spoon. Yes. The traumas. So we'll be writing to... Uh, <laughs> Tui. To Tui UK. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we've just been getting ourselves organised. Um, we've been going through our Navigate app, which we'll, you'll, we'll show you as the week goes on. It's the Tui app that you can book all your excursions, you can find out what's going on. I'll show you a little bit now what so that's So we started about. the day trying to be a bit organised um, for the rest of the week, and we've just had our first breakfast on board. Yes. Now, breakfast was until 9.30 today, um, so that was quite civilised, we thought. So um, I got up, I was awake about seven-ish, got up and just been titivating my poorly snored till about quarter to nine. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we've just been to the Vidastro, um, and we walked through and went and sat in the Bistro, didn't we, for breakfast this morning? It's called the Vidastro. Oh, I've still got it wrong then. <laughs> Hopefully by day eight you'll know. <laughs> We just have to take a picture of the sign and insert it. Yes, we'll insert yes. it. Um, I say Vidastro, you say Vidastro. Let's see who's right. Back to breakfast. So, um, buffet style, and there is a menu, isn't there, if you want some eggs? Yeah. So it's not the most comprehensive buffet you've got in the world, but no, actually... you can have Eggs Benedict, and they do fried eggs if you want some fresh fried eggs, and they do... Poached eggs? Um, Omelette. Omelette. Mm. And then you've got... Um, on the buffet, you've got scrambled eggs, sausages, bacon, beans, breads, croissants, um, fruit, some, salmon, some pastries, pate, lots of cheese, and yeah, so actually ham. a really good selection. Yeah, good selection. Yeah, good pot of tea. Yeah, absolutely. Twinings. Great tea. Yeah. So we've had a lovely breakfast. Yeah. We're just getting organised now because we're going to explore Ben. Ben. <laughs> It's Ben. Budapest. Budapest. Yes. Yeah. Join us in episode two when we show you around this beautiful city and we also experienced a fantastic sail away on our first ever river cruise.